Okay, this is the third and final web webinar on the answer to chess. So in this last last bit, it's really focusing on the answer. That is it. Simple as that. Just looking at the answer. And each individual concept comes out in its own little way. And it's really about utilizing each one of those understanding characters the behaviors on the board and all of the candidate stuff all of the other stuff that just makes up the answer so not going to pigeonhole any single one now in this last last series we're just going to have a look at the moves and the rationales as to why they were done simple as that let's go into the answer process so we're going to start this one from this position here. Just to highlight, at this moment in time, there's one, two, three, four pawns on this side. There's one, two, three pawns on this side. There's one, two, three, four pawns on this side. One, two, three. So equal pawns at this moment in time. So the, an exchange is going to kick off, which basically sets the ball rolling. Okay, so now at this stage here, um, it's it's a draw. How do you make something not a draw when you feel in your game, you don't see the eval bar in, in the game, but you feel in your heart of hearts that there's something that you can potentially do, especially if the opponent doesn't know how to work the pawns or their pieces. Is there an element of luck? Yes, there is, because at the end of the day, if the opponent doesn't do the right move then you can take advantage but it's knowing when to take the advantage that's the key thing so the pawn pushes down onto the knight we move our knight away obviously it's a nice safe place for the knight because it's it's functional here it's functional across here it's functional on quite a few squares at this moment in time more centralized, nice easy access to other parts of the board. So that's a really functional movement. Having a look at what the opponent has done with their knight, the knight in its own right is defending its pawn because the bishop is attacking the pawn. Is it functional anywhere else? It's functional in the reverse. So it's not functional in any sort of forward motion. Smallest of details in terms of position on the board, which is key in the candidate process that we work through. So now we're looking to try and take advantage of the fact that he's got like a backward knight. So a small movement like this, obviously the bishop was attacking the pawn, so that's helped us to elevate our pawn up a little bit. And we're looking to try and get a rhythm against these pawns in order to improve our position on the board. If the opponent sees it and they work it right, then yes, it will be a draw. But because of this knight move, this backward knight move, I believe there's a little bit of a tempo win for us. So they push their pawn down. Okay, and which makes it does make sense. It's a, a valid move, and we develop our king up now. The idea being is that, in essence, it could be a draw depending on what he does. But because our knight is managing this square, our bishop is managing this square. There is a little bit of a threat situation in that area. So he brings his pawn down, thinking that he's actually blocking off the attack for that area i'm thinking if we can get this pawn up here then if the pawn takes then we've got two pieces on this one it sounds simple you know because it doesn't actually have to take but if we pushed here and say he doesn't do anything well he can't push down and he doesn't do anything and then he moves his knight then our pawn takes this pawn is not really passing because this pawn is acting as a blocker. So it's quite a major step in terms of this particular game. So we do push the pawn. 
and they actually push past rather than capturing. That allows us to capture the pawn and we're in the ideal position now more so because we're going to have two linked pawns. So now we've got a pawn majority on that side. Smallest of details in terms of understanding the position and then when to do a threat and then when to capture in order to improve the answer process to provide a, a suitable answer to the question that the opponent had actually put to us. So now we've got two linked pawns, we're feeling fairly comfortable that we should be able to manage the position. So now the knight has come back into the game, but it might be a little bit too late to the party. So we develop our knight king up and start pushing the pawn now because we've got support with our own knight. So we can keep pushing the pawn and now put a check on the king and another check on the king and start developing our king up and at this point now we will have a nice passed pawn which is ready to go and get castled so at this point the opponent resigned so understanding the tempo of pawns especially for the end game is really quite crucial i've probably mentioned this in earlier videos that i've mentioned and um, we've been practicing this type of thing with pawns and it's the rhythm sometimes you can win sometimes if you're backward too much with your king you can lose because you then get zugs wang and stuff but in this particular game here understanding the rhythm of the pawns and i do believe it was because the knight then turned into a backward knight that didn't allow the opponent the full uh, benefit of their pieces working together so that's the first game within the last bit of the webinar utilizing the position checks captures threat support blocking and the rest of the uh, ethos potential value the potential viability of the moves really it's about how you're selecting your moves at the end of the day you want to try and pick out the right answer in order to make the right move it's as simple as that so we'll go on to the next few games and uh, see how we get on with those. Okay, so we'll start this game from this position here. And this game is about loss. It's about losing pieces that you didn't expect to lose, but at the same token, you believe there's something in it, even though you, know, you have lost key pieces because maybe your position feels a little bit stronger. How do you utilize the answer in that sort of process? So in this game here, we've moved the queen across and we're basically trying to establish a, a nice attacking position somewhere in terms of either getting the rooks across here at some stage, maybe putting pressure onto this pawn, trying to um, make some space maybe towards here 
at some stage once this poem maybe gets delivered a, a bad bad deal um you know maybe attacking along here that type of stuff so we're sort of stealthily trying to get a good position the knight comes down he's got like a two on one well it's got it's got a fork on the queen and the bishop so we move the queen out of the way and then he's got an x-ray through onto our queen so we move the queen again at this point was a little bit concerned because my queen was not in a very good position and how did i get there mm, bit too fancy with the queen so now he's pressing on with a smaller piece attacking the queen so we can't take really because he's got this x-ray through and we're trying to protect our bishop but all the while really we could have just moved our queen here and just brought it down so we've brought it into a, a place where it's not safe so the knight then attacks the queen again queen doesn't really have much space to go and then the bishop attacks attacking the knight the knight supported move the queen out of the way but we then they take and then we take the queen and then capture position doesn't feel too good for us even during the game another gauge bar showing that um, black is winning but it doesn't feel too good for us it feels a little bit out of kilter We've not really answered the opponent's questions in the correct way, especially with the movement of our queen dancing all over the place. Single piece manoeuvres wasn't supported and that definitely shouldn't have happened. But how do we shake ourselves out of that sort of situation using the answer process? Every chess player goes through those situations where you go, how did I end up like this? This is unreal. This is surreal. What? Why? You know. And the snowball effects kicks in and it just gets worse and worse and worse. So they start pushing forward. Now, this is where I sit and I go, well, the answer process will probably suggest to me that the opponent is either going to over reg now because they've got this cluster of pawns in the center. We need to now establish a good position using the answer process. You can bring the answer process in at any stage during your game. It's just whether or not you know that you are doing that. And if you realise that, okay, I want to change my mindset, this is what I'm using, then you do see some different impacts in your game. But if you just allow the snowball to keep on going, that that's where it just gets worse and worse. So we decide to attack the bishop because knights hunt the bishops in our mantra, trying to give the opponent something to think about. A king comes across and defends, so we take the bishop off the board. So the less pieces they've got, we're hoping we can try and um, get to better position. I mean, we do have a little touch here if the king does take, you know, with the bishop, that type of thing. So we bring the bishop through, trying to improve the position, giving the, some, giving the opponent something to think about. Because he does have this pawn that is in front of him here. Um, but I'm hoping he doesn't come down for it. But they do. Okay, so we bring our rook now looking to double. As you can see, the gauge bar is showing. It's not really good for us at all. So we're really trying to struggle to make them panic and do something kind of erroneous. So the knight moves. So in my head, I'm thinking that's given me a bit of tempo, but he's moved the knight so that this pawn can support the pawn. So he's bring the pawn down. So he's given an answer to our question so now we're starting to bring the king up a little bit now so trying to make it a fighting king and into a bad position so the snowball effect is still kicking in in this game but i don't lose heart yeah we grab and grab so we've got a bishop and a rook against his two rooks his two rooks aren't linked up at this moment in time he does have a massive power base of pawns but they're not supported so we still continue on so we push up this pawn just to basically rhinoceros head this particular action going here so at least we can capture the pawn if he does capture so now we challenge these pawns here and as soon as i did this pawn i thought oh why did i make that move because now his rooks are just going to come facing off my king and my king is just going to get trapped because where does it go you know i can't go here i'm going to get checkmated so Depends on what the opponent does though. He actually moved the king, so we took the pawn off and then they took. 
So now we, we attacked their rook. So we're trying to be positive and active in here, um, not sort of like making it look like we're, we're losing. We're trying to give the impression that, look, we're still in the game and we can do something. But it's a very shabby position, really shabby. So we bring the bishop back and they start attacking our bishop. So we're actually taking their attention away initially from any attack position. So we attack the rook again and we bring our bishop back. So now we start attacking. So we're giving them things again to think about. We're attacking, attacking. The bishop was attacking, attacking. Um, if we weren't doing that, the opponent would be improving their position even more. Have a look at this gauge bar. They are like two or three moves away from actual checkmate if they played it correctly. My concern was they could easily just bring these rooks here. Yeah easily bring them rooks here my king doesn't have time to move anywhere i'd have to push this up here block here come here he's still going to get checks on me my king can't go anywhere so that's what i envisaged them doing and that's probably what they should have done but they didn't okay so they pushed on to the king and initially i was going to go up here but then that would have been the death knell because i definitely wouldn't have been able to come back out so i'm looking for answers for myself to try and get my king out of there and how can i make them not think about bringing their rooks to this file so they capture we capture and they push down and we capture so as soon as they did this type of maneuver i thought oh that's a little bit better but they do have a few pawns that we need to contend with so i'm looking and i'm saying i don't want to exchange the rook just yet I think we can try and improve our position a little bit more. So we push onto the rook, smaller piece attack and higher piece. So they've basically given up all these pawns that were really their force to be reckoned with. Gauge bar still showing that they're out and out winning. And I felt a lot better about this position. Uh, I didn't think they were out and out winning. Um, I felt we were clawing something back using the answer process as best possible. As mentioned in the introductory answer video, um, it's not pretty, the answer. It's not pretty at all. It can be the ugliest, messiest type of game ever. But you're actually slowly but surely improving your position. So they attack our king. So we can take the pawn off here. Obviously, it's saying that was wrong. But I suppose he could come here. And then that would be done, wouldn't it, almost? Almost, because like my king can come here. But they don't choose to do that. They're taking pawns off the board. So we put a check on their king. And basically bring our bishop through, put a check on the king with a nice position play. Attacking the bishop, attacking the king. Basically skewing the rook and the king. So we can grab. So we're now actually material up from that position. It's almost like it's, you know, those statements where it says, well, you know, don't give up, you know, keep on fighting away. So now we put an X-ray through to their rook. So if the pawn does take, we take the rook. But now we can take that and it's all pretty straightforward now. Get a nice position for the bishop, get it supported, and then the king can go over and eventually it would get the pawn, etc., etc. So, yeah, never give up. The answer does help you if you focus on it especially if the opponent is definitely not providing any questions to you and in this case in this point the opponent did, didn't throw any questions to us especially around the weakness of our king and if they had done it would have been a different story so Moral of this little episode is really don't give up. Keep focused on the answer process. Keep asking the questions. If you don't ask the questions, you end up in these sort of situations whereby you're taking, taking steps that don't really develop your peace or develop your advantage in the game. And that's what you really want to do in chess. You want to develop your advantage in the game. And that that is done by asking the right questions and keep on asking the questions until the opponent can um, provide any more um, solutions.
Okay, this game's a real quick one, and it is really about being prepared to just take a free gift and just understanding the game. And it's a very simple one, and even, you know, high-ranking players, not, they won't do this type of stuff, but it's, um, it's just being able to take that free gift. Notice it, grab it, take advantage. Okay, it's a real quick game here, so it doesn't really matter too much about going through the answer concepts in a sense just a matter of just having a look and grabbing the pawn here because there's no immediate threats per se and at the same token there's no there's no defense to this um, pawn my pawn's not developed out so he's not going to get an exchange type thing with his knight I mean, his queen could come and uh, attack, but then we, we simply come here. So there's nothing major with that. So this is why we can take the pawn quite nicely. Bishop's now attacking the weak pawn in front of our king, but the knight can come down and attack the bishop. Bishop moves back. So now we're opening up our queen and also blocking off this bishop because it is a little bit of an unusual position. But I am thinking if they do drop here, I have seen this done in the past. Um, then we can just take this knight off the board and it's going to be done. And the opponent was moving very quick, so um, they did actually do it. Um, we grabbed there and then they resigned. So be ready to take a free gift, um, but be, you know, be also ready to anticipate the question. Yeah, And we were ready to anticipate the question by this pawn move. Yeah, Of all the moves that we did, we did this move because I've seen it before where I don't know why on earth they feel that this move does something, you know, bringing the knight here, because this pawn is protected, this bishop is not going to be able to take and, you know, do a double dose or anything, it's not like the fried liver attack, because this pawn is up, so it's not actually attacking this pawn, but, like I said, I have seen it done before, so, <clears throat> just be mindful, um, Sometimes we can think too arty and then we get embroiled in um, a game um, when really a simple manoeuvre would suffice. Okay, so this is the final game in the Answer to Chess webinar. So we're going to start this one from the beginning, just work through each individual step. We know why we do that pawn, so we don't need to break that down. We know why we're doing this um, knight move. We're attacking the pawn, making space for castling, etc. We know why we're attacking this center pawn here with our pawn. And we know why we're capturing here. We also know why we're developing this bishop, attacking this weak pawn, etc. And we know why we're um, basically defending this pawn. Okay, so we've dealt with and we've dealt with questions, we've thrown questions out, and we've got to this position. So now we're looking at basically developing our pieces. We could capture this knight here, but we're wanting to develop our pieces out even more x-raying through to the queen nice simple straightforward stuff now we've got space to go and castle all of our minor pieces are out in the game so we're ready to rock and roll our bed is made we're sorted out we've brushed our teeth we've had our breakfast we're ready to go in and now start doing some work okay so they bring the knight down so it's actually wanting to get activated and he's not got anywhere close to any castling's type situation. So it does ask the question really as to, well, are you really ready to actually come out and attack? Um, because at this moment in time, your king is a little bit airy. So they bring their bishop through now, obviously then looking to potentially go and castle. So we castle, just make sure that we're nice and safe. And then they castle too. 
So whoop to that situation. So now we're going to start asking questions big style because all our pieces are developed. Apart from the rooks, obviously, they're not linked up yet. But smaller piece attacking a higher piece can't be wrong. This knight move did an earlier, early attack actually before his king was saved. So now we do have a bit of a tempo to really establish um, a good attacking process towards them. So the knight moves, so it's lost tempo, it's had to go back to the position that it was in, but it's allowed us to attack another piece, a higher piece with a lesser piece. So we can capture and we're still back on this higher piece. Oops, excuse me. Now he did have the option of actually grabbing the pawn with his knight. Now these free gifts, like we mentioned in the, one of the previous videos, is that being able to capture those can help you to gain an advantage or to win the game or, or you know to really or get a draw if it's the case but in this in this instance the opponent went for the major the major piece out of those but in essence could have potentially grabbed the pawn back okay they grabbed the knight so we grabbed and now we're trying to improve our position but i'm being very mindful don't want to have any of the bishop type stuff of putting a check on our king etc so their smaller piece again is attacking our higher piece. Uh, a lot of movements, single attacks, not really working the pieces together, sitting on the back type situation. Um, but he's still in the game and he still does have this pawn attacking his knight. So he does move the knight. So at this point now we can actually take, man, this is, um, it felt glorious actually seeing the position. Yeah, because what we've done is, and what the opponent did give to us, and I think probably in the first video, it, we mentioned something along the lines of, when you're chasing the bishops around with the pawns, you have to be mindful that you're not giving them a good position. So each of the questions that the opponent was asking, so this pawn asked the major question about the queen, what are you doing? But it actually put us, in a beautiful position right facing the quick the king and that's the story that i was talking about i think it was the first or second video um in this webinar whereby you have to be mindful where you're actually sending the piece to it might look good but then that piece could be going to a better position on the board so the knight moving i mean this is a gift you know this is a free gift the opponent didn't have to move you know but I suppose in a way they did because the pawn's on it. Um, but it's then taking that advantage because we've got three pieces on there. So if the rook takes, which it does, then we take. It's not a checkmate per se, but now we can pressure a higher piece with a lesser piece. And then at that point there, because the bishop has blocked, and it looked quite awesome bringing the bishop here, but they have blocked their queen and their rook which are defending this key square, we can drop in here for the checkmate. So taking those opportunities to get those free gifts, I mean, this game was about free gifts and the opponent could have taken a free gift, which was taking the pawn back and maybe, maybe that might have improved their position a little bit and maybe forsaken this pawn move, attacking the queen and establishing the strong position here but it was like a veiled a veiled threat it was hidden because it was hidden behind the knight and when the knight's got so much pressure on it you're not going to see this kind of threat behind so go searching for those things as you're doing part of your answer and you will find and the answer will help you that's the end of the webinar Cheers.